Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Monday the 5th of August and you were just hearing Art, my partner Art van der Gronde and Ellie Bakker in concert last Saturday and I've just uh, played the first part of this small suite by Henrik Andriessen and the last two parts Andante Rubato and Allegro I will play right at the end of this evening prayer and I hope that your connections will all be good to follow this evening prayer and if not you can always listen to it later so for our opening Praise, O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because you are at my right hand and I shall not fail. I shall not fall, is actually what it says. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our evening psalm is Psalm 9, and I'm reading it as a canticle by Reverend Tom Schumann. Voiceless, yet I will sing songs of you, story songs of all you have done, and are doing for your children. Weary, we find the energy to rejoice in your presence, God of wonder. Why? Those bullies who pushed us around in the neighborhood are now telling you of their cruelty, recognizing that you had our backs even in those ancient days. You pay no attention to those who brag about how tough, how powerful, how right they are, even forgetting their names. As they turn into ruins of themselves, their towers in the sky being blown away by spirit's breath. But you, your justice is what transforms cities and people. Your grace is what brings all of us together. So we can find shelter in your heart as the most vulnerable squeeze closer together to make us feel welcome. As they teach us all your names, we have forgotten in our privilege. We will continue to sing of you, telling everyone of your kindness which re rebuilds lives and hopes. You know all too well the struggles we face, our ashen dreams, our failures which almost destroyed us. But your generosity restores our lives and we give you the credit for making us whole once again. The powerful, the wealthy, the know-it-alls, who are already, who are really the know-nothings, find themselves trapped by their own foolishness. As you hold them accountable for each cruel thing they did, as you send them into that time out that only you can say when it is over. The hungry, the homeless, the kids and the kicked out of their homes, the poor are all your most precious beloved. And you will not let anyone, anywhere, hold complete sway over them, but will make sure that they know you are on the side of everyone we would ignore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading tonight is from Judges, chapter 6, 25 to 40. That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull, the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father, and cut down the sacred pole that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold here, in proper order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the sacred pole that you shall cut down. So Gideon 
took ten of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the townspeople to do it by day, he did it by night. When the townspeople rose early in the morning, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the sacred pole beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. So they said to one another, Who has done this? After searching and inquiring, they were told, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Then the townspeople said to Joash, Bring out your son, so that he may die, for he has pulled down the altar of Baal and cut down the sacred pole beside it. But Joash said to all who were arrayed against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you defend his cause? Whoever contends for him shall be put by death by morning, put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been pulled down. Therefore that day Gideon was called Jerobal, that is to say, let Baal contend against him because he pulled down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came together and crossing the Jordan they encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord took possession of Gideon. He sounded the trumpet and the Abizarites were called out to follow him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh and they too were called out to follow him. He also sent messengers to Asher Zebulon and Naphtali, and they went up to meet them. Then Gideon said to God, In order to see whether you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said, I am going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground around it, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not let your anger burn against me. Let me speak one more time. Let me please make trial with the fleece just once more. Let it be dry only on the fleece and beyond the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only and all the ground there was dew. Here ends the first reading. And our second reading, the reading from the Gospel, are the first verses from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Blessed be the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. What I just did before I started evening prayer is writing a postcard to someone. And I think you know how that goes because probably you have done that as well. Writing a postcard for encouragement or out of compassion can be a fulfilling exercise. Taking time to think of someone else. Just a few words on a card, probably with a nice picture on the other side. Just a few words that could make a difference to someone's day. Brighten it up. They're only words you might think, but those words come from somewhere. You felt something when you wrote it. Perhaps love for the person, or empathy at least, or a genuine interest. And the recipient usually reads your feelings in those, into those words. And that is why a card is wonderful to receive. You feel comforted or loved. I find it quite a privilege to be able to read the first verses of the Gospel of John tonight. I'm not quite sure I can tell you why. Perhaps because to me it sounds like poetry. This Gospel does not start with the Christmas story. It become, begins much earlier when God made the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, without starting to philosophize or theologize, neither of which I'm qualified to do, what I get out of this is that God is a God who talks. We do not live in a silent universe. Our lives are a constant conversation. We question the world, we question the universe, we question each other and we ask ourselves why we are on earth at all. Everyone does that, not necessarily Jews or Christians, but all people with or without a religious context. But if we let it, God will, en will enter into that conversation with us. And wow, what stories do we get then when we talk with God? We get all of the Old Testament stories, like Moses and Deborah, and Ruth and Joshua. We get all the stories about Jesus and the parables that he told us. And we might just get an inkling of what life is about, a slight idea of how to live our life, a sheer glimmer of what our future could become. Let it be so. Monday office gives us the Beatitudes, and if I can be profane enough, those are just like postcards from heaven, if you think about it. Um, and so uh, we are going to listen to the Beatitudes, and I found a new version, wonderful, wonderful version. First of all, I need to copy the text. If I can find it, yes. The Beatitudes.
Let us pray. Abide with us, O Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is almost over. In your mercy and grace abide with your whole church. In your holy word and sacrament abide with us and with all your faithful people until the day star rises and with the morning light we rejoice in the glory of Christ. Gathered in the peace of Christ, let us offer our needs to God. Let us pray for the unity of all Christians that we may be reunited in the love of Christ. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all nations that the liberty of the gospel may be the foundation of every government. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own congregations that our lives may be rooted in the love of Christ. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are imprisoned by the chains of suffering that God will set them free. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, that they may rest in peace. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Always, God, your compassion and care have nourished us this day and have led us to this night's beginning. Keep the light of your hope burning brightly in your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. And in this cycle of prayer for the East Midland Synod, we pray tonight for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Derbyshire. And for our list of intercession, we pray for a peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel and other zones of war and violence and humanitarian distress in the world. We pray for Chris Willis, our Administrator and Office Manager in the East Midland Synod, following her surgery. For Elaine Dre, Secretary of our former Ermine USC in her pain and anxiety as she awaits surgery, which will be end of the month. We pray for June Peffy. We pray for Graham Garlip. And we pray for the Reverend Caroline Andrews. For Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen, we pray in her care and concern for him. We pray with Alison for her parents, Rev. Bri Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. We pray for Barbara Turner of Holy Moorside USC as she awaits surgery. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. For the Reverend Liz Adams and for the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. We pray for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for Father Andy. We are thankful for Bea who is doing much better and will remain in our prayers. And with me we also pray for Kelly in his journey to recovery and Laverne in her care and concern for him. We pray with the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth and their ongoing care of him. We pray for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We pray for Margaret Davis, secretary of our former URC Rose Hill, who is very poorly. We pray with Claire, Abby and Spencer for Chris. And we pray for good health and recovery for all who face illness, including members of the royal family. We also pray for those who grieve, especially for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. And we pray for all who pass, who grieve the passing of loved ones. All wise God, your compassion and care have nourished us this day and have led us to this night's beginning. Keep the light of your hope burning brightly in your people through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. As promised, the last two parts of the suite by Hendrik Andriessen, played by Aard van der Gronde and Ellie Bakker. Bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Good night. Good night.